All right, everybody, this is going to be covering a basic calculus problem where we're trying to maximize volume given a certain amount of surface area. So in this case, we're trying to figure out how to build a can that can hold the most stuff given that we only have so much tin to build the can with. So the amount of tin that we have, I'm going to call it surf oops, the surface area of the tin, is going to be equal to 50 square inches. So we have 50 square inches of tin to work with. We are trying to maximize the volume. And the volume, the uh, formula for volume of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared times height. So if you picture it, we have our cylinder and we're basically calculating the area of the circle and then we're multiplying that by the height. So you're just stacking up all these little tiny circles, you know, to infinitum to calculate the volume. For the surface area, the calculation is uh, going to be the area of each circle. So think of it, circle, you have two of them, plus circle, plus you have some rectangle of sorts that, that's wrapping around the circles. So you gotta find the area of this one times the area of this one times the area of this one, knowing that it has a height. We know that this is the height we know that this has a radius, so we can call that radius, radius. And this is not radius, it's actually gonna be the circumference of the circle. So you think about it, they're directing us to wrap around the edge of the circle. So you get, the, it's not just gonna be r, it's gonna be two, two pi r. So, again, we're trying to figure out a, and here this is two, this is, excuse me, back that up. This is pi r squared, and this is pi r squared. That's gonna be the areas of both those circles. So, let's start off. So, if we imagine this, if we're, we have only so much material to work with. So we can create a tall, skinny cylinder, right? That looks kinda of like a straw, something like that. It's really long. That last part wasn't too hot there. And then try to come up. Okay, there's our long skinny straw. Or we can actually do a short stocky kind of petri dish style um, cylinder as well. The question is where in between these would my volume be the greatest? So if I was to graph this, I'd have my really skinny straw over here. This would be radius and this would be the volume of that have my really skinny straw over here, it wouldn't have much volume. And I'd also have my Petri dish over here, it also wouldn't have much volume. But in between, it would do something like this. And I'm trying to find this peak value right there. Well, if you think about how would I identify that? Well, we know that the, this is rising, 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 rising until it hits this point. And then this is going down, 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 down until it hits this point. Right here, it has a slope of zero, m equals zero. That's my identifying factor. That's how I'm going to actually find that. In order to find that, I'm going to have to find a derivative, specifically a derivative of this. And you should notice if you're familiar with derivatives right away that this is going to be a little tricky because I have a variable r and I have a variable h. Pi is a st uh, constant. Pi does not change, so that's not a variable. I have two variables, so they can kind of change in unison meaning I don't really have an answer for this. So what I need to do is find h in terms of r. And what I'm gonna do is use my surface area formula to do that. So I'm gonna work kind of around in a circle here. So let's go up. So I'm gonna start with my surface area. I happen to know it equals 50. And going from these pieces here, I happen to know that the formula itself is pi r squared plus pi r squared plus two pi r h. Again, some two variables here, but I have an answer. I know it's equal to 50. So what I'm gonna do is solve for h here. So first I'm gonna link these up, two pi r squared. Add those together, you get that. Plus two pi r h. I have two options that I can do, kind of move with this. I can take out two pi r, Kind of make a parentheses and work with that that way, or I can just start out by subtracting this to the other side. I'm gonna do that, that seems simpler to me. So I'm gonna go 50 minus two pi r squared 
equals 2 pi r h. Now I need to divide that over, so 2 pi r, and I get rid of that. So h, right, right here, equals 50 minus 2 pi r squared over 2 pi r. Well, I can actually divide everything by 2, and this becomes 25. So it actually equals 25 minus pi r squared over whoop, pi r. There is my h. Now what I need to do, since I'm concerned not with the surface area, I'm concerned with the volume, I need to take this and place it into my volume formula. Again, volume formula is right here. So I'm going to come over this way now. So pi r squared h, let's move it this way. Volume oops, equals pi r squared h. Substitute all this in for h. You get volume equals pi r squared times 25 minus pi r squared over pi r. Well, this is handy because pi r squared, and then I have divided by pi r, I can get rid of that exponent, I get rid of that. And I get volume equals pi r times 25 minus pi r squared. Multiply that out, you get 25 pi r minus pi squared r cubed. That's a cubed, I don't like that. R cubed. And I don't need that. Okay, so 25 pi and pi squared are, are constants. I don't need to worry about that. Those won't change, but my r is a variable. I want to find the derivative of this function with respect to r. So really what I'm finding is kind of dv dr, something like that. Don't worry about that. I'm going to call it v prime. So we have 25 pi, r becomes nothing, it becomes 1, minus pi squared stays the same, so I'll just write pi squared. The 3 from the r comes down, you get 3, and it becomes a 2. So you get 3 pi squared r squared. Okay, and again, if we come down to my graph here, you have, we're looking for the slope where m equals 0, or in, in this case, v prime equals 0, it's the same thing. So let's go up here. We're looking for v prime equals 0. Let's just put 0 there. We get 25 pi minus 3 pi squared r squared. Well, again, we're solving for r. So let's move this to the other side. We get 25 pi, that's negative because I subtracted it, equals negative 3 pi squared r squared. I can divide by negative 3 pi, and in fact, I can just get rid of the negatives because they're both on the same side. And I get 25, whoop, 25 pi over 3 pi squared. Well, that's handy. I can get rid of that. I can get rid of that because pi over pi squared is just pi, or 1 over pi. So now that becomes r squared. I get Simplify, let's make it pretty here. So we get 25 over 3 pi. Square root everything. You get, and you get r equals square root 25 over 3 pi. There's my answer. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my calculator and just calculate this so I don't have to worry about these ugly square roots and pi's and you get, let's see, 25 divided by 3 times, let's see, 3 times pi equals 9.42. 25 divided by 9.42 is 2.65, and then I take the square root of that, and you get 1.62, 1 1.629. So I'm gonna round up and say 1.63. Okay, so that's my radius. I found out where my radius is, and really what that gives me is this function. So this value right here is 1.63, okay? And that gives me my maximum value, but I don't know what that is yet. So we need to figure out what that is. So coming back, 
we know our volume equals uh, pi r squared times height. And if we recall, height equals 25, where is it? Minus pi r squared over pi r. Minus pi r squared over pi r. Okay, so we're going to plug that in. V equals pi r squared times 25 minus pi r squared over pi r. And we plug in our value for r, and it looks something like this. And then I'm going to go back to my calculator off screen. Pi times 1.63 squared times 25 minus pi times 1.63 squared over pi times 1.63. Okay, so I think I can actually simplify this out. Take out the pi, take out the pi, take out the square root, take out that, and I get 1.63 times 25 minus pi times 1.63, and I'm gonna multiply it again so it's actually cubed. Okay, so again, I'll take out my calculator. 1.63 times 25, this would, e this would equal 40.75 minus 1.63 cubed, and that's 4.33 times pi. So that would be 13.61 roughly. If you subtract those out, 40.75 minus 13.61, you get a final answer of your volume equaling 27.114 cubic inches. All right, we zoom out. There's our wonderful, wonderful uh, work there. So I hope that makes sense. Again, we kind of made a little circle here. We started as number one right here. We moved into number two, finally number three, and then we finished in number four. I hope this makes sense. I'm gonna be posting kind of random calculus problems that have kept me busy during COVID. And if you have any questions on it, I'm happy to help.